I am so excited about today's video because I want to speak about one of the chapters in the Bible that fascinates me and that is Daniel chapter 3 which talks about these three Hebrew boys Ananiah, Michelle and Azariah. I know you know them like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego which is their Babylonian names. Now this story is so fascinating to me and for the course of this video I tack it the mindset of faith because I could see that these guys are the mindset of faith and what do i call the mindset of faith in a nutshell is you having a mindset of even if god do not help me even if it does not come true like i think it should even if i am not healed in my body i am not losing my confession that he is god and it's also this mindset of saying i am saving god unconditionally which is i am not saving god based on what god will do or will not do for me i am saving him because he is god that alone is enough so that is what i am getting into with this video and this is to encourage us because most of the time we find ourselves becoming conditional christians now in daniel chapter 3 the story starts by the king nebuchadnezzar setting up a statue and asking everybody to worship that statue it is fascinating that in today's world if you want to compare what is happening today there are so many statues that we are worshiping and it's as if there is a subtle way that the devil is making us to bow down to worship him even though we are not seeing it nebuchadnezzar have made this statue and everybody has been commanded to bow and worship when they hear the sound of the instrument but these three guys did not obey that because of the fact that they are intimate with their god they are intimate with their faith the jewish law said i have no other god that shall have no other god before me so these people they know that there is no room for compromise there's no room for conditionality which is if god will save us from being thrown into the fire then we are going to stand on our confession they did not have that kind of mindset they had the mindset that we are not bowing so now they've been brought to nebuchadnezzar when they were brought in front of nebuchadnezzar he asked them is this true that you don't want to bow down and worship my statue now let me give you a second chance they are going to play the instrument again so that you will worship it's their answer their reply is what beat it let's read it so that we can see from the scriptures shadrach meshach and abednego replied oh nebuchadnezzar we do not need to defend ourselves before you if we are thrown into the blessing furnace the god whom we serve is able to save us he will rescue us from your power your majesty but even if he doesn't we want to make it clear to you your majesty that we will never save your god or worship the gold statue you have set up this is so beautiful and so fascinating that what level of faith did they have that they could say this in the face of a real threat this was a literal fire and at this point nebuchadnezzar is vexed that they increased the fire seven times how it was born in the blessing furnace to for them to be thrown into the fire and they did not lose their confession and this is what i call the mindset of faith because they were not having a mindset of like if god is going to save us maybe we are going to not bow because we know that god is going to come through they did not have any evidence that they would be saved from this but they know because faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen they have not seen this kind of thing they don't know if god is going to come true but as humans they believe in god they know we believe that our god will save us and he can save us but then as humans even if even if he doesn't come true even if he doesn't heal me even if he does not give me the job even if he doesn't make me get married at the certain age that i said i'm going to marry even if i do not get rich like i thought i would even if the breakthrough will not come i'm not changing my confession and that's where we should find ourselves with this mindset of faith that it is not about what i get from god it is about getting god himself now the first thing i want to dig on is conditional christianity or conditional christians a lot of believers are in a place that they are only saving god for what god will do for them such that they are saying if god heals me i will do this if he does this i will do this now it's like 
I'm giving God these conditions. If you want me to follow you, you have to do this for me. If you want me to save you, you have to prove yourself to me. No, that is not the heart. But we are living in a culture that the devil has a subtle way of leading us to bow to him. Now, these guys were told to bow and there was a real trait to them that if they don't bow, they are going to lose their life. But they said, what is our life to us if we have him? What is our life to us if we can save him? This thing so fascinates me and like encourages my faith because this was a real situation. And we are living in a world that when Christians come to face some, you know, tribulation that looks like fire, you know, literally you're being fired from your office. You have been given a trade that you'll be fired or you do what they tell you to do or you bow because that is picture. And we have conditional Christians who are telling God, God, you understand. God understands. I didn't have a choice. No, you have a choice. And it is not easy. It's easier said than done. But it is a place of us building that belief that we get to know that God is able to do everything, that there is nothing impossible with God. And these guys knew that so well that they said, we know that our God is able to save us from this fire. He's able to save us from your hands. But even if that part, I'm not doing God a favor by following him. He is the one that favors me and loves me. So I'm not doing him a favor to come to him, to save him, to walk before him. He is doing me a favor because I need him to live. In him I live, in him I move, in him I have my being. Without him, I cannot survive, I cannot live. He is the very life in my lungs. So you should come to a place of knowing that God is not an option so that you can pick and choose Oh, today I will go to God. When he does this, I'm going to choose him. No, it's not an option. He is the only option. If God will not help me, no one else can help me. So I'm not going to forsake God. Because I should come to a place of knowing that I am too small to change who God is because he did not give me what I desire. That's me being selfish. Thinking that God is no more good because things in my life did not change. I know this is a hard saying. But it is the truth. So in Daniel chapter 3 verse 28, it goes down that Nebuchadnezzar then realized that truly this God is a powerful God. Nebuchadnezzar said, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than save or worship any God except their own God. I wish we could have this mindset of faith and trust in God. That we denied the big opportunity that looked good. It seemed like it was God, but on the late, we realized that it wasn't God because it wasn't honoring to God. That we forsook some things and laid it off and be like, I'm going after God. I'm not going to deny God because of this amount of money. I'm not going to deny God because of this relationship. I'm not going to deny God because of this person. I'm not going to deny God because of this church. The next thing I want to talk about is compromising Christians. Most times, some Christians do not come to a place of oh total denial. They are in a place of compromising, tiptoeing. I know God will understand. God knows I am just a human being. God knows that you can choose him against every other thing else if only your heart is aligned to him. Because he knows that everything you need are the easiest things for him to do for you. But the harder thing to get is to get you to believe him, to get you to trust him. And whenever the devil comes, the devil brings these subtle ways for us to compromise so that he presents us with the things we so desire, the things that look good. And that's why I say that every good thing is not God. Every good opportunity is not God. Every open door is not a God open door. Now, in Matthew chapter 4, it talks about the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness by the devil. The last temptation was the devil tempting Jesus to worship him, which is what I aligned to this video about the idea of the devil bringing subtle ways. It may not be like the three Hebrew boys case whereby they were like, this is the fire. You're going to burn in the fire if you're not believing. We may not get to experience that, but what we would experience in our time is the devil trying to make us compromise with God. It is bringing us to a place whereby we are being compromised. He is not telling you leave God. He's just telling you you can hold on to God and still do this. 
He's just telling you, you can hold on to God and still hold on to this other thing. You can hold on to God and with your idol too. It's this compromise of bow down and worship me. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. We may not necessarily experience the challenge of faith like it was in the book of Daniel chapter 3. But every day we wake up, we are experiencing a challenge of our faith by what the culture is pumping into us, by what the society, the mindset that is being pumped in, and then the things we now accept as normal that was not normal. The things that are actually abnormal, that are against God, that are not normal. We are now embracing these things and we feel like, no, it's the culture, things are changing. And then, no, God's laws and God's principles do not change. Because God is eternal. His principles are eternal. So we should come to a place of, I am having this unconditional service to God. I am aligned with God. I want to trust God with all my heart. Whatever God says, I am going to stick to that. Even if I do not get everything that I want to get, even if I do not get all I desire in the office, as long as I am serving God, that is enough for me. And I would challenge you that if you are genuinely standing on the side of God, there is nothing that can stop God from giving you everything you have ever desired. Now the truth is, if you read that Daniel, you realize that they were promoted just for the fact that they stick to God. And God made sure that they were promoted even higher from where they were before. So it is never a loss. You are never in a place of losing when you are having faith in God. Because scripture says that he that has faith in God believes and knows that God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. You are not seeking God for the reward. You are seeking God for him that I may know him, that I may be acquainted with him. It is not I'm seeking him so that they will do this. It is not that conditional Christianity that you are like, God, I'm seeking you, do this for me. It is this wholehearted, unconditional service. God, I am here. I don't have any other option except you. You are my only thing. The one thing I've had is that of the Lord. And that alone will I seek. I hope this video has spoken to you. I hope it is beneficial. Let me know in the comment section how this video has spoken to you. I am OM Akwan. This is my YouTube channel. Do so well to hit the subscribe button and share this video to your friends who you would love for them to have the mindset of faith that even if they don't get everything they want to get from God, that is not an excuse to let go of God and embrace whatever other thing is on the other side because it pays to serve Jesus. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.